transfer the bolt holes through. Um, the adapter's all on, torqued up, lock tighted in. So I started doing the gearbox cross member on this by modifying the existing one. Um, and I do not like it. So I'm starting again. So what I'm gonna do, get some steel, cut it to the correct angle to deal with like the tapered chassis, uh, put an angle on it as per the existing one where it folds down uh, each side. Uh, ignore this, this is for when it was a five speed. Add, and these will add the strength back in. That's mainly why I do not like this because I'm going further away from the buttholes and I've taken some strength out and it would be quite a bit of arsing around to get the strength back in. So I'm starting it with this piece. Now I don't actually possess any kit capable of bending steel like this but I have learned a trick on a few videos off YouTube where you bend it using your teeth, right? Now I can't quite do it whilst holding the camera. Bear with me. <laughs> All right then. And of course I gotta chuck some holes in it. Now you can use the pillar drill, but again, another trick I've used. Is... Again, I can't really do it while holding the camera, bear with me. All right, happy days, yeah. Right, that's all done, gearbox cross member. Um, it all has to come back off for painting at some point anyway, so there's no point getting too in depth on it now, chucking washers and all that on it. Uh, these are two of the standard holes. The whole gearbox cross member was further forward. Uh, drilled it out, used M10 uh, rib nuts in there. Um, yeah, that's where it is. It's in. Box is central. Nice. So I'm going to pull the engine and box out. Then I can take the mechatronics unit out of the box, send it off to be rewired. Um, I would have a go myself, but it's one variable of it not working, which I could do with removing. So I'm going to get somebody else to wire it for me. Before I remove the engine and box, though, I'm going to measure the length for the prop shaft and the um, transmission tunnel. So I've quite crudely uh, made up a fiberglass tunnel. Uh, with lots of excess and then I'll cut off bits I don't need but I'm just going to mark where it should be and then um, once the engine box out I can start glassing it in then. So this is currently what I've cut out to make it fit. Um, I'm giving it more room than it needs uh, because it's going to be extra annoying if I get it back in and it's fouling. So Very crude looking but it's about the right shape. And then I'm going to trim it and glass it in. Quick measure of the prop has come back at 1,088 millimeters, and that's at the axle at full droop. Needs a slide in portion put in it because it's a solid axle car, and obviously the prop gets shorter as the axle goes up into the suspension. So I'm going to send that information off to a prop shaft shop and see what they can come up with. One thing with the scimitar is the engine is so far back you have to use the uh, the more dangerous holes on the crane.
the mechatronics unit is behind that cover. I've had this off before, so I was hoping that uh, there was no more oil left in it, but I guess being held at 45 degrees, it's found some extra. So close. You must actually feel like you're, you're here with me. Anyway, in here there is, um, Christ knows what it is, but isn't it scary looking? So this is where all the shift solenoids are, and this is where the uh, stock ECU connects to the solenoids and controls it through uh, witchcraft and all sorts. Well, I'm going for a DKG ECU controller. And basically there's a load of wiring behind here, and you don't use that anymore. You don't use the stock wiring. You basically chuck fresh wiring into the solenoids out to a different plug your standalone controller that plugs into that and then um, I've got a standalone controller and I should be able to make this change gear automatically and manually on the flappy paddles or a stick if I wanted to uh, behind any engine and of course the engine I've chosen is the B234 yeah sorry for the uh, excessive dust but you know genuine barn so comes to the territory i'm actually pretty good at working it out now when people put barn finds on ebay i can i can see if they're lying or not i can see if that's barn dust or not most often than not it's uh they're just bloody chances it's just regular dust i'm gonna call it quits there um if you do enjoy these videos and uh maybe you're not aware but i've also got the comma or the camaro as i call it uh because it's a comma with a saab aero power again the b234 in it uh, if you do like the sort of stuff that i ask around with then please consider subscribing and uh, sharing the videos about because i do think there is uh, i could go somewhere with this and uh yeah it's uh it's nice uh, if i could grow this into something so uh see you soon